Hi guys, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I am Deep Gautam. Let's learn something very interesting, which is how to use Swagger in your RESTful service. So Swagger, first of all, I would like to tell you what is Swagger. Swagger is a kind of a framework, uh, you can say, which provides you the support of your RESTful service documentation and gives you the testability. So your um, it has been widely used in the industry. So let's see. I will create one web API project. I will have some CRUD operation on web API, and then they will test those documentation and uh, uh, CRUD operation in action with the Swagger. So let me go and create the <coughs> one projects. Let it uh, let it call uh, Swagger UI test with RESTful service. RESTful service. Yeah, here you go, and <coughs> it may take some time to create the project. I said web API, uh, API, and I will say, oh, okay, well, I don't need any authentication. You go and just create simple web API application for me, and it will go and create the web application for me. So. So here you go, your web application has been created. Let's see, I would like to add the one model class over here. So just right click on the model and let me see, employ. I want to imply model over here, which I will use for the CRUD operation. So I will simply go and create few properties on the imply. Let's say this is side A, okay. The next property which I want, uh, let let me say this is going to be the name of the imply and it is going to be the type of the string so let's say name and the third property I want uh, let's say is going to be the string and gender okay here you go so your imply model has been created let's build project for one time I have built it and it is building my project so i have uh, just added one model in my uh, web api project and which is imply and this imply model we will do insert update and delete operation so yeah build is successful now next thing is you need to go and add one controller which will support you the insert update and delete operation for you so i'm using web api controller with x and using entity framework here you go you just click on this select your model clause so my model clause is imply yeah i got it the moment i tapped imply you select the context class let's just select context uh, context class is this and my controller name is implies controller here you go and it will add the controller for you in the controller you will be having the insert update delete and get methods all already implemented for you so it's just a magic you in one click you are able to do insert update delete and get uh, operation and that's uh, really nice combination of the this visual studio web api and entity framework which will talk to the database and uh, it is just creating uh, <coughs> my controller and it will take uh, imply clause and uh, do the insert update and delete operation okay so yeah it's uh, taking little bit time yeah here you go here you came and it has created all the methods over here okay all right so let's see i will i will what i will do uh, let's insert one dummy imply over here so in order to do that simply whatever the code is there in the post imply simply copy these two lines I will add my first imply by using the constructor over here. So I will say CTOR tab tab and I will paste my code over here and then I will, I will create the object of my class. So it's my imply class. This is going to be the object and I will say new imply. Here you go. So it should be accessible over here. Why the hell this is coming up? Yeah. So let's say imply dot name is equal to 
die got them. Yeah, we are good. Imply dot gender. Okay, here you go with the gender and it's me. So just this, uh, like uh, be with me for another three minutes and you will learn these things. I will run this and call this controller. Okay, so here you go. I'm just running it and it will spin up. Uh, the web api project for me yes guys so it came up and i just run the web api project and i said uh, go to my imply controller and it showed me that there is one imply over there which is mail id is one and it's the gotham so that's the part of the web api so i simply inserted one imply on this web api now what is next okay so let me go and tell you what next you need to do in order to implement the swagger over here okay so go to your tools note you get package manager and go to package manager console and simply you just install this package okay so let's see the magic of this package it is attempting to install dependency for the package source buckle and source buckle will give you the swagger UI. So by the swagger UI, you will be able to see the documentation of the API and even you will be able to test, fire up the, your API independently rather than calling it from the UI or somewhere else. So what is the benefit is it is going to give you the first of all, you will be able to test your API in the swagger. Second thing, what the API is doing that all you will get in the swagger documentation so i will show you in a while and uh, let me tell you what it is doing so it is installing all the dependent package for the swagger and uh, <coughs> it looks like source buckle has been installed for me okay yeah it is okay so where it is it is in app.startup.cs so here you go in app.startup.cs and uh, here is your Swagger configuration. This is enabled Swagger and it is the C dot API single version. Okay. <clears throat> That's all right. Enable Swagger UI. That's also fine. So this is the Swagger configuration dot CS config dot CSS will be added once you install that particular package. Okay. Now let's run this project. What is happening and how it is, what it is doing. So <coughs> now it's, uh, time to see our hard work what we have done and you could just follow my video and you will be also able to achieve this implementation so swagger implementation you will be able to do very very easily let's see the screen is coming up yeah so here you go and uh, you simply type swagger after this url and see the magic so Okay, all right. It is fetching the resource. It says you have imply controller, which is having get imply method, post imply method, delete imply method, get imply by ID and put imply by ID. Let's see what it is showing in the get imply. It says you are uh, <coughs> you will be getting such kind of metadata if you will try it out. Let's see. I will say okay, give me the imply whatever I have in my database. Okay. So here you go and it said that yeah I have got the imply and there is one imply, two imply because it is in the constructor. So B button is there which you have already in your constructor. Okay. So just now uh, there are two imply in my uh, implies controller and imply database. Let's see how this post works. Okay. Here you go. So I will post one imply from here. And how to do that? You simply click on this. It will give you the model for that. So let's say I'm uh, sending a pull over here and gender is male and just try, hit on try it out. It will do your operation and insert that particular impact. So that Atul has been inserted. Would you like to check it? Yeah. Here you go and check it. What Atul? Where is that particular imply has been got inserted? Yeah, so here you are able to see. So what's the benefit? You are able to see the imply and you are able to test your REST full service. So if you put any kind of documentation on your web API, just you put XML comment on, on top of your method and you will be able to see that the description as well. 
and you can test all